Uh, mamas, listen. If you want to start World War III fast, there's some there's some quick ways you can do it. You know, you can say I hate BTS and then put your phone on its charger and go to sleep and wake up to 4,000 people planting bombs in your house. Or you could say Harry Styles looks like a wet mop and all of a sudden there are four ICBM missiles heading straight towards your house to kill you and your whole family. But by far, by far, the, the quickest way to create World War III is to just simply say on Twitter or TikTok, hey guys, maybe, maybe Shein. Clothing brand Shein is kind of bad for humanity. For some reason, there is no way to stir the pot up faster than criticizing Shein. I am probably going to get a lot of hate for this take, um, I'm really curious to see where, how y'all stand on this issue, but I need to, I need to talk about it because it is pissing me off, um, and it's really crazy how dark the rabbit hole and how deep the rabbit hole goes for Sheehan. Um, so we'll get into that, we'll get into this topic after this quick break. Now, most of the time when something is ridiculously cheap, there's a catch. But that is not the case with Every Plate, baby. Every Plate is America's best value meal kit. You are saving money and reducing food waste because in these meal kits, every ingredient comes perfectly portioned. So it's not like you want to make a nice little salmon with some spinach on top and then you got to buy a giant box of, of, of spinach because that's the only size they have at the grocery store. And then you have all this leftover spinach and then it goes to waste when you just need like four leaves of spinach. That doesn't happen, thanks to every plate. Um, I've been chefing it up. I'm not going to lie. I, I've been tearing it up in the kitchen, um, making my little meals. But it gets even better. Because you can get your first box for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code DRAMA149. That is everyplate.com and enter code DRAMA149 to get your first box for just $1.49 per meal. Pretty good. Pretty delicious. Want to impress yourself and others with your amazing cooking skills? Check them out. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Let's continue. <sighs> okay. Okay, mamas. So, let's give a little backstory to Sheehan. If you don't know, which you probably live underneath a rock, if you don't know what Sheehan is, um, it's like an it's a website where you can buy clothes. Simple as that. What makes it different? It is cheap as hell. We are talking like you can get t-shirts for $3, which, you know, like is possible to see in like stores in person. Like you, you can probably go to the dollar store and get a shirt for $3, but like these are like semi on trend clothes that you can get for like borderline dirt cheap. And obviously when something is cheap, it becomes incredibly popular you see people on TikTok post like these Sheen hauls where they unload a giant bag. It looks like it could hold like a body of a sumo wrestler, these ginormous bags. And then they just cut it open and it's like, this is what $100 from Sheen got me. And it's just, it's just clothes after clothes after clothes. And it's like, for only $100. There's, this is totally a normal thing, and there's no catch to this in the long run of society at all. <laughs> so I want to talk about the, the, what the catch is to that, because, you know, I think for the people that know what Sheen is, half the people know how horrible it is, and I feel like genuinely half the people don't actually understand how brutal it is, and... Before we begin get, in, get into this too deep, I want to recognize that like I, I don't I'm not trying to like make this come off as class classist. I want to like acknowledge that yes, I am in a financial situation that I'm very lucky to be in. However, literally three years ago, my bank account was minus ten dollars. So it's not like I'm like some out of touch. I'm not like I'm Jeffrey Star being like I don't understand why you can't just go to the thrift store or something like that. Like I I've I've been 
I I know the struggle, okay? I know wanting to have a fresh style, wanting to have some fresh kicks, and then you look in your bank account and you don't even have money for food. I understand. So, like, I want y'all to know that I have that perspective too. Although, yeah, Jeff Bezos basically, like, <laughs> begs on his knees for me to give him money every day because I'm just so filthy rich. No. And I don't want to just single out Sheehan. There's uh, become like a whole kind of wave of these super, super, super cheap, like straight from China to consumer companies. Like I'm trying to think of some other ones like Boho. I think Fashion Nova is like semi guilty of this. There's another one that's like literally Romway, I think it is. And mind you, a lot of these companies have reached out to sponsor me. Um, so this is me uh saying die no um and i'm now going to slander your brand so um let's get into it i i've always known how bad sheen is like i think like right from the start i of like seeing kind of its rise of popularity i realized like oh you know five dollars for a t-shirt four dollars for pants Mmm, something's up here. And immediately, like, it kind of became known that, like, Shein's quality, like, first of all, the quality of the clothes, very poor. Like, you put, you buy a fucking, a, a sock from Shein, and that's gonna go through the wash three times and become dust. It will literally disintegrate, like, it's, like, it, like, it fought in the Avengers Infinity War. Like, it is insane how bad the quality is. And... This is kind of like a symptom of the broader issue that is fast fashion. I'm sure you've heard the term before, just in case you don't know what it is. It's like basically, basically the 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 lifeblood of Shein, like just creating clothes quickly and fast and as as close to whatever's trending as possible, with like no regard for quality, um, workers' rights. It's it's basically just making it as cheap as possible, as fast as possible, and doesn't matter if it's gonna even, like, be molecularly held together in, like, a month. Like, the only, the only goal for these companies is to create something as fast as possible. So, they do this, drumroll please, uh, the, the big mystery revealed, sweatshops. What is a sweatshop? Horrible, literally horrible. You want to know how bad it is? I recently like saw this article trending on Twitter. Uh, this is specifically about Shein. They have employees in China in these sweatshops working 18-hour days. They're giving no weekends, only one day off a month. Imagine you look at the calendar and you are working 18 hours a day every single day for that month with one day off. That's fucking insane. And beyond that, just just to just to really put a, a cherry on top, they are paid three pence per item. Now, this is a British article. I literally, I literally have no clue how much a pence is. And I was I gonna look this up before and like convert it and be a proper podcaster? Yes, but I forgot. Okay, three pence. So that's one cent. Okay, so that's one cent. Cool. So that's literally insane. Um, imagine, imagine working 30 days in a month. Say it's October. You're working 30 days that month. You are getting paid one cent per garment, which... They are selling for, let's say, let's say you're making one cent and they're selling a t-shirt for $5. They are paying you, oh God, the math is not going to be good. Uh, like 0.01% of the profit that they are making from that. That's, I think that's what the math is. That sounds right. That sounds right. That's insane. That is literally fucking insane. And it goes further. It says women are found to be washing their hair during their lunch breaks as they have so little spare time outside of long shifts. Y'all, 
I go insane if I don't even sleep eight hours. So imagine the imagine only having six hours outside of work time each day for the entire month for the rest of your life. If that isn't enough to like truly make you rethink buying fast fashion, buying Shein, I really don't know like how else to get through to y'all. Not, to, uh, I just said like, y'all, like you are all fast fashion consumers. Like, listen, <laughs> I, I do understand like how a financial position that would be unfavorable would make it a little bit easier to swallow that news. Like, well, okay, well, I don't have money for any other clothes. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm so glad you asked. Now, this is probably the best solution that I have for you. Not perfect in the slightest. Um, thrifting. Thrifting. A lot of people are now in this kind of mindset where they're reliant on like fast fashion. They're like, well, what other option do I have? Genuinely, what other option do I have? And that's kind of what the argument is online that I keep seeing, whether it be on like, uh, like TikTok comments or like a Twitter thread. People get so defensive and start immediately start calling people classist the second you criticize Shein or fast fashion because they, they say, well, I, I don't have money for anything else. Where else am I supposed to get clothes? Thrifting. And I know I'm ju I know just saying that sounds like just putting a bandage over like the wound of poverty caused by like horrific capitalism, but genuinely thrifting is underrated. Currently everything I'm wearing right now thrifted. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I only thrift. That is not the case. I as I said before, like I do I do spend money on clothes sometimes and sometimes too much. That is my own <laughs> that's my own thing to work through. But thrifting one very cost effective for the most part. There is a lot of like insane thrift stores and vintage stores that will just mark up the price like hundreds of dollars over what they got it for, which is insane. However, it is one a cheap option, two a I think par personally the best option. Now I get not everyone's like clothing style is gonna want to be is gonna is gonna like lean towards like kind of the vintage look. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like like obviously clothes in a thrift store are gonna typically be like a little bit on the older side, which isn't s some people's styles, and that's understandable. However, who is stomping down the stairs? However. <laughs> It's, it's a very valid option. It is a very valid option to thrift your clothes. Now, obviously, there's also things that you really can't thrift, like underwear, socks, like very kind of personal objects that are going to be like rubbing against orifices. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm thrifting my underwear. That is just not the case. That is probably never going to happen. That, but at the same time doesn't mean abandon the idea of thrifting entirely, okay? At least give it a chance. I think that is the, that is one of the biggest reasons why people sleep on thrifting. You know, you can have like one bad experience and then just write off every thrift store, but that is genuinely the beauty of thrift stores. And that's why I think they're a genuine competitor to Shein because one thrift store is going to have completely different clothes than another thrift store like like d by nature like completely different clothes and you look at Shein and by the way this was absolutely horrific it's like over like last year i believe like H&M put out like 4000 different styles which is insane it's it's insane how Shein and all these fast fashion companies are making H&M which are previously like horrible for the environment it's making them look like they are like small little businesses and like protecting the environment because Shein put out like 40,000 different styles last year. 40,000. 
That's crazy. That is so crazy. And I know I keep saying crazy. I'm trying to find, like, another adjective or synonym that, like, truly describes, like, how batshit crazy Sheehan is. But even with 40,000 different styles, you want, you want to make the argument that, like, Sheehan, like, is unique. It's like the Amazon of clothes. You can get anything on there, any style. How many thrift stores do you think are in the world? And how many different styles do you think are there? And they're not all just from the same time period of like the same ugly, like freaking like recycled fast fashion that like Sheehan is pulling out of their butthole every day. Like thrift stores are having a whole roster across generations of, like, fun, stylish clothes, and I get, like, I know what probably turns people off is, like, 90% of it is gonna be stuff that you would never wear, or it's not your size, or it's, like, stinky, I don't know, like, you can make all sorts of arguments for, for thrift stores not being your cup of tea, but damn, like, at least try it, genuinely at least try it, it is, from when I had, like, minus $200 to now when I have $4 billion, no, um, to now, still my favorite method of shopping. And even if you don't like, per se, like, actual thrifting, like, sorting through the racks, there's other options. And we'll get into that right after this quick break. <laughs> all right, so you all know that I mentioned earlier that every plate is good for reducing food waste by having these perfectly little planned meal packages where every, every item, every ingredient is all you need. But listen, every plate is 58% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. So say you want to like order food. It's going to be 58% cheaper than that meal you're getting with like a giant big old delivery fee. And then you better be tipping the tip and taxes, all that. Well, you're going to have to pay taxes regardless. So like, let's be real. But 58% cheaper. That's crazy. Um, and you can choose options from their menu, including family friendly, quick and easy, meat and veggie, or just veggie. So if you want to be on your vegan teacher wave, you can do it, baby. Um, I, I love every plate. It's been delicious. Um, they're so creative with their meals and their meal ideas. I could never do that. I would literally just be making mac and cheese every night if it was my if if I had the reins, but I don't, thank God. Um, but you can get your first box for $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code DRAMA149. That is everyplate.com. Use code DRAMA149 and get your first box for $1.49. Um, thank you for sponsoring this episode. Let's continue. Okay, so say say you hate sorting through the racks, sorting through like 400 different shirts, to find what you want. There's other options. Now, none of this is like sponsored or anything. I've, they're just like things I've heard of. Depop. Uh, thread up. Etsy. Okay, these are all websites where people are like reselling vintage clothes. Um, and, you know, this honestly might even be the best option. Now, obviously, like Depop and all these companies take a cut. So, like, you're still like giving money to like a big corporation, which, but, but. At the same time, it's not, and also, I should mention that, like, a lot of thrift stores are for profit. There are lots that are non-profit, which can be good. Um, there's some that are, like, the Salvation Army, which are very questionable because the Salvation Army don has donated to um, conversion camps. So that's kind of horrible, um, and I try to avoid those when I can, but... There are lots of, like, non-for-profit thrift stores, like Goodwill, stuff like that, where, like, the money they get from the clothes actively goes back to the community in, like, all sorts of, like, programs, job, uh, freaking like, training, stuff like that. Like, it, it's a cycle of, like, good that just keeps continuing. And then there's also, of course, like, the for-profit thrift stores, which aren't terrible. Like, a lot of the time, they're, like, you know, mom-and-pop vintage stores or like, they're still going to a company, but it's not necessarily, like, a huge, crazy company. Like, I guess, like, Buffalo Exchange would be an example. Like, you're, it's still, like, a big chain, but it's not like you're giving money to Shein. <laughs> it's, like, on the scale of, like, good to bad, we have, like, the, like, the best. We have, like, Goodwill, like, non-for-profit thrift stores. Then we have, like, 
Okay, four profit thrift stores. Then 4,000 fucking miles to the right, we have Sheehan. <laughs> like, it is... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, don't worry. My green screen just literally broke. <laughs> literally just slid off the wall. Um, I need to order a new one from Sheehan. <clears throat> okay, I put the push pin back in the wall. <laughs> Which I don't think I can do. It said in the rentals agreement when I got this place that I can't poke holes in the wall, but are there 50 push pin holes in my room? Yes. Anyways. So you also, you basically, you have to think about where your money is going to. Like the product aside, when you're buying from Sheen, you're actively giving them more money to further grow their business. And like, and that money is not going to the people that made the product. No, that's not happening. It is going to the greedy bastards that own Shein and all that. So, and, and just like another point, just a little bit more sprinkles on top. <laughs> Shein literally rips off designers, like, like small independent designers that are constantly ripping off their designs, like stitch for stitch it's really insane it's not just like designs it's like fully the entire product they're ripping off and obviously if you're a small designer like a graphic designer or a fashion designer you're not gonna have the money to take on a humongous company like Shein who is based in a different continent like that is such a complicated process that like the average artist is probably not gonna be like well versed in doing so also, update, three pence is four cents. I really can't do math. That doesn't make it better. That really doesn't make it better. It is still, um, <laughs> still four cents. So, and listen, we could go into, like, literal rabbit holes about how, um, like, the actual conditions of working in a sweatshop. I mean... I believe it was like five years ago when it was a sweatshop for, oh, I cannot remember the company. It was one of the similar kind of companies to H&M. I don't think it was H&M exactly, but their, fa their sweatshop burnt down with the workers inside. And it's like a thousand people died. You can't even begin to like quantify how horrible fast fashion is when stuff like that happens. It's it's truly insane. Now, like, Sheen tries to cover it up. They, like, came out with a statement, like, seven hours ago saying, like, we continuously work with our suppliers to ensure we have safe and regulated working conditions for factory workers. If findings prove to be otherwise, we will take swift action to make sure this is upheld. Bull fucking shit. Bull fucking shit. Y'all are fucking lying. Bullshit. I don't, like, I don't even know what to say. Like... I don't, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> you see videos of what really goes on in, like, these places? Like, uh-uh, not real. Y'all are lying! Okay, anyways. Now, I want to kind of get into, like, more kind of, like, how sh where Sheehan is in terms of, like, the culture. Um, I mean, first of all, I think their clothes are ugly. I think they are, like either ripoffs or completely like unoriginal just sad copies of what's actually like cool in fashion like say let's say like actually i think i literally saw this happen um say balenciaga releases like the sock shoe you know like the classic one that like james charles wore like became infamous it gets released originally and mind you insane costs like probably like a thousand dollars for this shoe and immediately like companies like Shein will get to work and usually it's like a three month kind of like turnaround but in three months they've made the same thing almost like obviously it doesn't say Balenciaga they would get sued but almost the same thing for let's say like ten dollars that's kind of how the cycle goes for these companies, it's like anything, like anything now that is popular and 
is say high fashion maybe has three months before it is like literally bastardized by these fast fashion companies and it's like you a lot of people make the argument that like you know they're making these styles more accessible to people they're making it cheaper so more people can have these things that are like cool i guess you could say <laughs> if you want to call the james charles shoe cool um but i genuinely believe there's no amount of like coolness it could be the coolest shoe on the world it could like literally be like wow like this is the most amazing creation of fashion we've ever seen and she and put it out for five dollars there's no amount of coolness that can justify the conditions of these sweatshop workers and i'm not trying to like just make y'all feel like shit for like ever buying from these companies because i'm sure everyone has bought something from companies that produce clothes in sweatshops because it's not something that is just advertised it's not like you buy a shirt and it's got a picture of like the child in cambodia that made it for four cents like that is not the case it's so hard to like track down where these clothes are coming from and it'll say on the tag like made in, made in cambodia made in bangladesh and you're not immediately aware what that means. You're not like aware if that means that they are having good working rights, that they are being paid a fair wage. And even when companies can say that they are, a lot of the time they're just fucking lying and it's not the case. Okay. It's not like, I think we should also be cautious of like when you see like kind of greenwashing or companies just like pretending that their products are made fairly if you have the time, like, do a little bit more digging. I guarantee it's still... I mean, unless workers are getting, like, paid the same as where they're getting... The product is getting consumed, I don't think it's fair. And even in, like, the U.S. and Canada and, like, Western countries, a lot of the time the work condition, working conditions are not fair. There's sweatshops being ran within the United States... Um, whether it be just like horrible working conditions, even if it's minimum wage or pe like employers paying under minimum wage and using like undocumented immigrants as labor shit like that happens too. So it all just kind of falls under the big umbrella of like capitalism, but like, it's really hard to kind of like quantify your purchases and like, think, is this like a fair purchase? And that's kind of where, like, I think thrifting is a good a good way to kind of break the cycle because that money is no longer going to companies that are exploiting cheap labor, exploiting the environment and all that. It's, it's like just breaking the cycle. The money is now going to either like the thrift store or the vintage store, which is better. World's better. Now, finally, obviously, Jesus Christ, the environmental, oh my God, the the environmental impact of fast fashion is crazy. You want to look at pictures of landfills, you're going to see that little $3 Shein jeans that you ordered in there and all the pictures of landfills. Like when you have clothes that are so shit and like literally falling apart, obviously people are not going to wear jeans around with a big old hole showing exactly where you poop. No, you're, uh, most people are going to throw it out. Like, I highly doubt the average Shein customer is going to be well-versed in, like, sewing. And it's just going to sew the holes back together. Because, A, that is a lot of work. And, B, yeah, no, no one's doing that. So, by creating clothes that are so low quality, they are going to end up in the landfill faster and faster and faster than anything else. You look at thrifting. These are clothes that have like stood the test of time. This sweater, I think was like freaking knitted in like the eighties. Now under what conditions? I don't know, but you know, judging by context clues, I'm going to assume good working conditions because it is still here 30 years later. Um, so we have that. 
But back to the environment, not only is like are people just throwing their clothes out because they are absolute booty ass and terrible quality, like you also have to take into account that like most of these clothes are coming from China. And this is like very much unavoidable a lot of the time. You you see very rarely clothes like made in the country that you live in unless it's like grandma down the street at the farmer's market like <laughs> like knitting you a little sweater like it, it's this one is very hard to avoid i'm not gonna lie um like even clothes that are in thrift shops that are made like 10 20 years ago are probably gonna be made overseas but like she and clothes are coming from china for the most part they're getting shipped over in big bags of plastic and you know Plastic packaging aside, which obviously has horrible environmental effects, like, it's a long way to ship stuff when, it, <laughs> I know it keeps going back to thrifting, but when you have perfectly good clothes sitting in your local thrift store, which probably came overseas too, but they've been here, and you can pick them up, you bring your own bag, you can't bring your own bag to, for, to Shein, you can't ship your little Trader Joe's cloth tote bag over to Shane. Be like, hi, can you please fill up my bag with three dollar jeans that are gonna have a hole in my booty crack in a month? No, it's gonna be in like fourteen plastic bags. So <laughs> before I like literally blow my top, I need to wrap it up. But I want to say like it. It's definitely something if 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 you want to like be kind of more conscious with your consumption. It's a process. It's not like you can overnight just replace your whole, like, closet with, like, grandpa sweaters. Not saying that everything at thrift stores is grandpa sweaters, but also not saying that grandpa sweaters are bad. I love. Um, It's It starts with just being more mindful of what you're purchasing. Like, A, where the money's going. B, how it was made. C, who made it. And D, D, um, how long it's going to last you. Also, E, how much it costs. I know that's probably, like, that's probably A, to be honest. That is not E, that's A. Like, it, it does, I under, I truly do understand how much, like, how much, like, budget changes this whole situation for most people. But when you have clothes that are the same price, when thrift store clothes are the same price as Shein clothes, which I don't ever think that Shein will ever be able to beat thrift store clothes, and I'm talking like true, proper thrift store clothes, I don't think that's possible because literally thrift stores are as cheap as it gets. Just, y'all, just try and be a little bit more ethical when it comes to consumption because it it, it is truly getting scary how big Shein is and how how little people seem to care about it. And I know I'm like sounding like real vegan teacher in this bitch, but like <laughs> it it is scary like how little people care about the environment and will just endlessly consume and like post their Shein hauls like it's a flex. Like I just got 40 40- Pieces of clothing for a hundred dollars. That's not a. That's not a fucking flex. I'm so sorry, but that that is just simply not a flex. Please go go find other ways, and don't say, do not say you need Shein because what happened before Shein? What happened before Shein existed or any fast fashion? Were you running around naked? No. You you got clothes at the thrift store. Um. Call me classist. I don't care. Um, but that's that. Let's read some of your drama. Um, as you'll know, at the end of every podcast episode, I read some of your drama. Um, if you tweet me using the hashtag drama mama podcast, I will read your drama on the pod. So tweet it to me. Okay. This one looks crazy. Um, <laughs> this is from. <laughs> This is from Ari. Hi, Ari. Thank you for submitting. So I went to this Christian camp, and they were the most homophobic and racist people ever. For example, they said that if you are LGBTQ or in any other religion, you will die soon and go to hell. 
But anyway, we had this one assembly and they talked about this girl who died in a tragic car accident and blamed it on her being lesbian. And this made me mad, so I just pointed the middle finger at the person disrespecting that poor girl. Long story short, I got sent home early and grounded, but I feel like I did the right thing, to be honest. Oh my god! Oh, J Jesus, that is horrible. Um, I'm so sorry that you have to go to that camp. That's literally horrific to, like, so much to unpack there. You did the right thing, obviously. Like, I really hope you, like, know in your heart that you did the right thing. Personally, I would have <laughs> done more. I'm not saying that you should do more, but I would have literally shit in all of their breakfasts the next morning. Um, that is disgusting. And it's so, like, scary that places like that exist. I went, I, I, I said this in a previous episode. I think this is one of the very early, like, I almost died episodes. But I went to a Christian camp when I was, like, I want to say, like, 14, 15. It was, like, when I, like, post my first video on this channel, I think. But um, I literally, like, like, sprained my neck when I woke up. I just woke up and, like, whipped my head around and, like, sprained it and, like, could not move for, like, two days. And they just prayed for me. Like, it was, like, so cultish. And I'm not trying to, like, dog any religion or, like, Christians in general. I'm just saying, like, this camp, like, was literally religious extremism. Like, they... One of the camp counselors, like, told me they, like, don't believe in, like, modern medicine. Which I'm sure wasn't, like, a, a value reflected by everyone there. I'm not saying they're all, like, literally, like, denying medicine or anything. But they prayed for me instead of, like, actually getting me medical attention and, like, getting me a nurse or anything. Because they didn't have a nurse. So, um, that is just a, a terrible place to be. I'm, I really, like, I hope you tell your parents, like, do not bring me back here. Like, do not, like, fight. Like, literally fight. Um, but in the meantime, like, leave a Google review, like, whenever you have institutions like this, one thing that you can do is, like, just review bomb them, like, <laughs> create, like, a one-star review on Yelp, on Google reviews, try and, like, warn people at the very least, like, share your story, that's what I did with the Christian camp I went to, um, that's the best way to, like, stop bigoted or just, in general, terrible places. It's a good old Google review, but also please tell your parents, do not drag you there. But that all being said, I love you all so much. I hope you have a good rest of your week. I will see you next week. Go to the thrift store, live your little Emma Chamberlain fantasy, and I'll see y'all later. Better the week, it's Joe.